So what's the difference between galvalume and galvanize and why should you care? Let's find out today on Smith House. Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. We just got finished putting on this galvalume roof behind us and I wanted to take the time to get a little bit nerdy with how galvalume works, how is it different than galvanized and why we should care and maybe what you should choose for your next project. So long story short, galvanized steel works off of a cathodic protection method, meaning we consume our zinc while we're protecting our steel and over time the zinc will be consumed completely and our steel will be left exposed and rust. Galvalum works by creating a barrier to protect the steel while also giving you some of the galvanic protection of the just the straight galvanized steel. So galvalum gives you the best of both worlds, a better longer lasting berry protection along with some of the galvanic protection and the galvanized steel will only give you the cathodic protection and a little bit of the barrier but isn't as long lasting as galvalum. So there you go. If you're picking a new roof today and you like the shiny metal look like we do, you've got your answer. If that's what you came for, then you can go find the next thing or start on your project. Good luck to you. But for the rest of you who are wanting to get into the geeky stuff, let's get into it. So galvanized steel is a iron alloy steel. And when I say steel, S-T-E-E-E-L, steel, I say it steel. So now you can translate for yourself as we move forward. So steel is a iron alloy and iron doesn't like being iron by itself. It wants to be with something else. It wants to lower its potential energy. And one of the most common ways that it does that in our atmosphere is by creating iron oxide. So iron oxide is iron that reacts with oxygen and it creates this red flaky stuff that we know as rust, right? It rusts. And the problem with rust is that as the iron reacts with the oxygen and creates iron oxide, it's still a porous, flaky, brittle material and it is always exposing fresh iron underneath that reacts with the oxygen in the atmosphere and the process goes on and on and eventually the iron all rusts away to iron oxide and it's fat and happy because it's got a lower potential energy but me and you are saying, come on man, you were supposed to be a roof or a car or a bridge or whatever, you know, just just be iron. Why do you want to be iron oxide? So we have to make it stop trying to be iron oxide and we have to keep it as iron or more commonly we have to keep it as steel which is just iron mixed with some pixie dust, some carbon and now we add some other stuff to it too and makes a very good high strength long lasting, as long as you don't have corrosion, long lasting light material when we use it on roofs like what we used behind us. So how do we do that? There's two basic ways that we do that. One is we create a barrier coating and we don't let any of that oxygen get to the iron below. The second one is we can create a cathodic system to where we have a anode that corrodes preferentially to the uh, cathode and it protects the cathode through an electric cell, an electrochemical cell and we're able to protect the material that we want by corroding the material that we use as a sacrificial anode. So that cathodic system was first uh, discovered back in the 1800s in England when they were building ships. They used copper to protect the bottom of their hulls um, to keep marine growth from happening. Copper creates uh, uh, ions that marine growth doesn't like. And they found if they put hunks of iron attached to the copper, the iron would corrode and the copper wouldn't. And this is because the iron is a, has a higher galvanic potential than the copper. The problem in this system was that when they did that, it got rid of the copper ions and then the marine growth started growing on the copper again and it was worse for the ships than just letting the copper corrode. But there was a guy that was working on the project with them named Faraday and he did a lot of work in this. Go look him up, you'll learn a lot about the system. But he figured out that he could create uh, electrochemical systems that would protect materials while other materials corroded. And that's exactly what zinc does in this system here. So I've got steel at the core 
and I've coated it in a thin layer of zinc. And when I cut this end, the zinc is able to protect this exposed steel underneath. Even though it's exposed to all the rain and all the air, the zinc is able to cathodically protect the steel. And out here in air, it's got a throwing power of about an eighth of an inch, meaning that this zinc will corrode preferentially to the steel that is about an eighth of an inch away. When you're in an electrolytic environment, say seawater, then you can have a anode that is attached to a big steel hull and it will protect for a very far way away. So if you see hulls of ships or of any other structures underwater, you'll see anodes that are put every now and then and they protect a very large area. But out here in air, we've got a throwing power of about an eighth of an inch. So we have to coat it in order to get that kind of protection. So that leads to the second way that zinc protects the steel and really the primary way that it protects the steel on any type of large surface area systems like a roof. And that's, it's a barrier coating. So it keeps the oxygen from reacting with the iron below by creating this barrier of zinc carbonate. So zinc, fresh zinc when you're out there, it doesn't like being zinc either. All these metals have a problem with not wanting to be themselves until you get really noble like gold. But zinc wants to be something else. It wants to lower its potential energy. And the way that it does that first is it reacts with the oxygen and it creates uh, zinc oxide. Then when water gets on it, it creates zinc hydroxide. And that zinc hydroxide will react with the CO2 in the air over time and create zinc carbonate. Now zinc carbonate is a pretty tenacious layer that will not react with the oxygen any further. So as long as you've got that zinc carbonate on top, the oxygen won't be able to react with the zinc below and it will protect the steel below that. The problem is it's not a super tenacious barrier, meaning it will erode and it will get brushed off and it will slowly erode away over time, exposing fresh zinc underneath. And when that fresh zinc is exposed underneath, then it does the whole process again. So it is actually getting thinner over time from just a barrier standpoint. And then on the edge, as it's protecting that uncoated piece of steel, it's also getting thinner over time as it corrodes preferentially to the steel. So it's a great system. It's been used for a very long time. You see barns made of it all around up here in the panhandle of Texas where we're at, and they last a very long time. But there is something better. This is galvalume. And galvalume is 55% aluminum and 45% zinc. 55% <laughs> aluminum and 45% zinc. Now let's talk about aluminum just for a second. Aluminum is an amazing material as well. It creates a super tenacious oxide layer as soon as it touches air. So if I took this little aluminum filter thing and I sanded it, as soon as I remove my sandpaper from it, it's already reacting with the air. Within half a second, it's created a aluminum oxide layer. Within 24 hours, it's created a thick enough aluminum oxide layer that no more oxygen will react with the aluminum below. On a side note, when you're welding aluminum, you have to get rid of those oxides and we use AC to actually blast them off with electrons. Super cool. I'll talk about that on another episode. But aluminum creates this super tenacious oxide layer that protects the aluminum beneath from corroding any further. So that's why we think of aluminum as being a corrosion resistant material. It's not that it doesn't react with the environment, it just reacts so quickly and creates such a tenacious barrier system that none of the oxygen on the outside is able to react with the uh, aluminum on the inside. So this material, galvalume, 55% aluminum, takes a bunch of the benefits of aluminum on the barrier protection and applies it to this. This was developed by Bethlehem Steel to provide a double protection layer. One, aluminum creates that super tenacious oxide layer. And then two, the zinc provides the galvanic protection that you want on your cut edges. Now aluminum will give you some cathodic protection when applied to steel, but it's not um, as electrically different from steel as zinc is. So zinc pushes you even further away from steel's potential and you create a more 
um, a more powerful cathodic protection by incorporating this zinc. So it has all of the berry protection of aluminum, it has some of the cathodic protection of zinc, and it's a very long lasting material. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for geeking out with me a little bit. Subscribe if we've earned it. Comment below with any other material questions, with any other video ideas. Comment below and just say hi. Go follow us over on Instagram and we'll see you next time on Smith House. If you're a construction worker and you're on here just looking for tips and tricks, I'm glad you're here. But also, always be educating yourself, man. Always be looking for why, are, why is that like that and why is that like this? And for example, the reason I'm sitting on this bench right now is because this chain was a galvanized steel chain. This is a galvanized tube, steel tube right here. And over time, I don't know how old this bench is, but over time, this chain has used its zinc layer. It's used it up. It's corroded away. So now we've got this iron oxide layer here, this rusty brown layer, and this is going to fail before this right here. This tube has a zinc layer that is still intact and it's providing its barrier protection with that zinc carbonate. And there's not a lot of cut ins and places for the zinc to have to corrode preferentially to the steel. On this little chain here, there's a whole bunch of cuts and a whole bunch of twists and a whole bunch of bends and a whole bunch of places where the oxygen and the iron can start wanting to react. And the zinc steps in and says, no, don't do that iron, I'll corrode preferentially. And now it's corroded completely away. So look around you, if you see something that you wonder, hmm, I wonder why that is, don't just say I wonder why that is and go on. Look it up, learn, figure stuff out. It's a wonderful, fascinating world out there and I hope we can learn together on why stuff works the way that it works and apply it to building better buildings like this.